Hello, good day and welcome to Go on the Run. And today we're going to continue with using Kubernetes in section 26. And today we're going to look at part two of our episode 01 in section 26, which is about handling many services. And so in the first um, part for this episode, I showed you essentially a diagram that says, okay, we have multiple services, some microservices, and we have one that's a counter, and there's a server, and the counter will generate some values and then send it to the server. And it was the job of the server to store it or persist it somewhere. Then we'll have something called a polar, which would then pull randomly these values from the server, okay? And that was our polar. And so we had this simple diagram. Now, let's just say that oh, instead of calling it a counter, I call it a producer. And I still had the server, and the producer was producing some data and sending it to the server. And then um, the server would still be persisting it to the database. And now we had a consumer, which was getting the data from the server, consuming it, doing something interesting with it. So it didn't change or does not change the previous diagram that I had. But I'm going to stick to what we had before, which was the counter and polar, because the place I saw this example is this YouTube video here about Kubernetes. And I wanted to make sure so at least I feel good about you know saying that oh that's where I saw the example. So I'm going to use um, those words that was used in the example instead of saying producers and consumer, even though it's the same thing, it doesn't really change anything. Just wanted to be sort of transparent. It just makes me feel better knowing that oh, that's where I got the, the example and that's why I'm using it. Um, I have certainly used producers and consumers before directly sending messages over channel and number of my videos. So it's not something entirely new, but I still wanted to sort of give credit where credit is due. Um, for that reason, I'm not going to use consumer producers, but rather counter and polar. Now let's talk about some values that we need to be able to configure or provide. Now we can hard code it, but why do that? You know, just in case we need to change, um, it's easier to just provide an environmental variable or a parameter that we can use to override things like ports and so on. So let's think about a server. The server needs to be listening to connection, whether it's connection from the counter to center value or from polar to get a value. So we'll call that the listen address. Well, the listen address for the server, well, that becomes the API URL or where the counter should be able to access this API that it needs to call, right? So we'll call that the API URL for the counter. Similarly, for the polar, that's gonna be the API URL is where to find the server essentially. And finally, the server needs to be able to persist data somewhere and we said, you could persist it to a file or anything like that or SQL database or something. In this example, I've chosen to use Redis. So our server needs the Redis URL, which is the where is the Redis server, Redis cluster, but basically a Redis server, as it needs the Redis URL. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to provide these as environmental variables. And as we talk more about coding later on and talk more about architecture, we see why some of these sometimes make sense to, and it's better to do them as environmental variable as compared to, let's say, passing them as parameters um, or command line arguments. So for now, let's just go with, we'll make them environmental variables without getting into too much of the why just yet. So with that said, if I do too much talking, we'll be here forever and we still have to write code. But before we do, if this is your first time here, welcome and consider subscribing. Definitely by the time you get to the end of this video, if you like the content, please do subscribe and leave comments and let me know what you think. If this is not your first time and you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Just hit the subscription button there and be notified when I post videos. And definitely leave some comments or something. If there's a reason why you don't wanna subscribe or you haven't hit the subscription button, definitely leave a comment, let me know why. I'd really like to, get your feedback and see what I can do to earn your subscription. For all the other people who are subscribed and checking out this video, thanks for coming back. Now in the last video, I asked you to try and implement these three services um, yourselves, and then I'll show you my implementation, which I'll do now. Um, this is gonna be somewhat of a long video, 
it's going to be a multiple parts, but I'll post all of it one time. It's still going to be considered part two of episode 2601, but this part two in itself is going to be a multi-part just because um, I take my time and go through <laughs> developing these three services, especially the server. The server takes the longest. The counter and polar are really easy and they are probably like five minutes or something. But the server, I spend way too much time explaining it. And so that's going to be, a, this is going to be a long video. But um, let's get started. And at the end, I'm going to ask you to leave some comments about how you think I did in terms of presenting this material and my implementation of these services. What did you do if you tried it? Or if you were even thinking about doing it, what were your thoughts? Like, did, did it come close to what I implemented? Or were you thinking of something else? What did you use for your persistent store? Here I use Redis, which is a key value store. And that's because it's just so easy to implement um, the solution using Redis. And so think of it like Redis, like a map, essentially, um, where you give the key and the value and that's it. And so that's what I use. But anyway, let's jump in and take a look at the code. So at my command line, I'm going to change to the part two directory. Now remember in part one, we didn't have any code. And so I'll start up my Visual Studio Code Editor. The one of the first things I want to do is I want to create a module. And so I can say, so now I have a module created and I can go back here. The next thing I want to do is since I'm going to be working on my server, um, I'm going to create a server directory with a main that go in that directory. So let's think about this for a second. So our server is going to open a rest um, a endpoint, implement a RESTful endpoint where you can accept um, you know, post request and also it has to implement a get. So what we will do is we're essentially going to be doing having this. Let's do some documentation. So we're probably gonna have something like you know. Okay, that seems okay to me. I mean, we could switch them around if we like, but that seems about all that we need to do. Okay, so, oh, I should probably put um, Redis database. All right, something like that. Okay, so I think that's fine. So let's see. So essentially, this is gonna be our guidepost of what we're going to implement. So, like I said, what I want to do is get my address that I should be listening on from the environment. So I'll start with a variable. I'll we'll call it listen address. And I'll say that our listen address is port 8080 on the local interface. So that's fine. I could say local host, but you know, that's fine. And we'll address Redis later where we integrate Redis. At first, I'm gonna do this with all Redis. And then later on, we're gonna integrate Redis to persist our data. So let's do function main. And now we can say, what's the first thing we should do? Well, this is considered like the default value. But remember I said, so we wanna be able to make it so that our, our listen address could be overwritten or a port, right? So let's just read that environmental variable because that's what I wanna use. And then if it's provided, then overwrite the default. If it's not, then we use the default. So that's again pretty straightforward. We use the OS package get env function to read that environmental variable. So what we've done is we've, and then if we get a value, then we overwrite it. If not, we'll keep our default. Nothing crazy there. All right. The next thing we want to do is to be able to register our endpoints. One of the things that if you seen some of my audio videos in this same series I think I can't remember which section it is but you can go back and see I show how to write a RESTful endpoint I use the HTTP packet right so we can use HTTP that handle func and we can do something like counter and then certainly give it a function handler so we can probably do something like you know post counter or something or post handler and then we can then do like HTTP that listen and serve, right? And you know, there's our address, that's fine. And then below here, we'll do function. And then we'll, our post counter would be something like, da, 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 more like W 
this, and then more like that. No, this works perfectly fine. Except we'll have to um, now figure out how do we handle the case of post on this endpoint. How do we, or this path, how do we handle um, get? Because if we call this post, now when we send to this, do a post to this endpoint, well, this function is going to get called. But the same thing is going to happen when we do a get. So we need to be able to differentiate the two. And so we can certainly do it by, you know, within our handler, have some other handler that then say, if it's a methodist type get or post, then call an appropriate function. So I don't want to do all of that. So instead, what I'm going to do is use this package called HTTP router. And HTTP router is lightweight and simple. And if you have ever used um, Express, it looks very much like Express. So, um, you know, basically you create a new HTTP router and you say, hey, router.get, this is the method I'm interested in. You give it the path or the, the route and then, you know, your handler. And notice that the handler looks very similar to the one that HTTP uses, at least these first two parameters. And this last parameter is just a um, so that you can get params from HTTP router. And if you're not going to use them, well, then it's an underscore. If you're going to use them, then you can just say whatever, right? So I really like this. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, and so it sort of looked pretty much like you know, the H, you're just using the HTTP package itself. And then look, notice for HTTP listen and serve, you just pass it this router that you created. So that is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to say here instead, router colon equals to HTTP router name. And then I'm going to save and hopefully it pulled that in. And so, yep, it did. And let's see, I go back here, yep, it pulled in the correct one. And then I can say router that get. Well, let's do post first. Router that post and this is the endpoint and this is my post counter. And I can say, well, there is this um underscore you can do HTTP parameter. Now, when we think about posting, we're not going to posting to the, um, we don't need parameters because we're not using any URL parameters. So this is pretty much don't care. So we can say HTTP router that params. We don't care about it. So something like this. And let me make this a little bit smaller here. Okay, so we can see more of the code. Well, for now, I'll actually close this so we can see most of the code. And then I'm going to duplicate this function and I'm going to say, let's do get. So get counter, and when we're doing get, I'm not gonna use URL parameters either. So I'm going to, again, just leave that. And so get and counter, and we want to do get. Okay, it doesn't really matter the order you register these. And then we want to do listen and serve. And so we're going to do listen and serve. And this is the thing we want to use as our mux, right? To figure out what to, how to handle this. So we're going to use router, right? So router implements the um, interface that listen and serve expects, which is expects, which is the handler. If you don't pass one, it uses the default, but since we're not registering our endpoint with HTTP, but rather with this router, we want to pass the router. Now, listen and serve returns an error if there's a problem. So we can say error colon equals, and then we can say, you know, if error not equals to nil, then log ROS, you know, we can say, I don't know, fatal or error, doesn't matter for, for this, for what we're doing right now. Um, Fatal F on to start server and then something like that. Okay, so again, all that get imported. Um, of course, we can um, go to our file here and do run um, mod tidy and 
or you can just do go get and it should get it but now that's all satisfied and so we're good all right so pretty straightforward and simple and if you don't have this command air i'll put the url for where you can get it there's this little app that allows you to let's say i go to my server directory and if i type air and i do like this it's just going to keep it's going to build my application and run it so i don't have to worry about keep running it over and over and if your application happens to exit it will just rebuild it okay so it's one less thing for you to worry about and so i'll use air to do that and to build my application and my app is actually listening so um if i were to do nc local post and then port 8080 and then minus v uh, is going to tell me that connection succeeded so my port is listening there of course if i try to get something it's not going to work because i'm not really you know doing anything so let's put a message here let's do log Russ. not very fancy but let's, let's just do that and then we'll do get call and then again notice how my code is rebuilding in the back i don't have to do background i don't have to do anything and if i were to do this i see the port is open um what about if i did curl minus v slash local host 8080 um forward slash counter and you can see uh, i was successfully able to call my get endpoint it didn't return anything because we haven't implemented that yet and i can do post i can do minus x i believe and then post and then if i do that you can see post endpoint is called okay so if you have crawling computer it certainly works well as you can see but I prefer another app, which I'm going to put the link to that app on the screen. And you could think of these as new replacements for things like curl because they're simple and easier to use. So for example, I can use HTTP and basically for people on Mac, you just do install HTTP IE. And then once you install that, the command that you get to run is HTTP, right? And with this command, there are a bunch of things that you can do. But one of them is I can do HTTP and I can do a GET. So if I do HTTP and then um, local host colon 8080 port slash counter, and I just do that, that is the same as if I run curl and you can see it resulted in a GET call. Um, I can also do like a minus V to get some more information. Okay. All right. So that's one option. The other thing about HTTP, HTTP IE, in terms of doing post, if we actually want to post a JSON value, it's pretty easy. I can do counter colon equal, and let's give it a value. I'm going to give it six, for example. And this means post. And you can see, if I scroll back up here, oh, let's go here, I scroll back up, you'll see it did a post to that endpoint. And you can see it automatically say that, oh, you know, it set it to application JSON and it created a JSON document for me with the value six. Um, so that's some of the power of this thing. It's really sm simple. Now, if I take out the colon equal, I just did that, it will post it as a string. So, you know, that's just one thing to be aware of. And so now we have something that can work. Okay, so I mentioned that I'll, I'll work on the server first. And the reason is that I can then use some other application like HTTP to be my my polar, right? Or my consumer, or polar in this case, as we said, we can stick with that. And I can also use it as my counter to produce a value. So how can we use this then to produce a value? Well, we know this work, this works. So what about if we did something like this, random, right? There's this um, variable called random that creates or produce a random variable every time a random value every time you run it so there we go and so now we can do is wrap this in a for loop so we can say for and i can say like i in 
and do sequence 1 to 20, for example, do this thing, and I can say done. And now 20 calls, you can see the 20 calls, or it should have been, well, actually, no, uh, my bad, three calls, because um, in sequence means that all I in sequence is one, one, and then two, 20 is the other thing, um, the third one. So what I really want to do is enclose this into a sub shell to say, I want you to run the sub command, the ship command sequence in a sub shell with the parameter one and 20. And then the result of that, I want you to iterate over it. So now I'll get my 20 calls. So there we go. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you, um, let's say you don't know any bash programming, which is now what we we're doing, for example, but let me just show you really quickly. If I say for i in sequence one, and let's say just do five this time, I say do, and I do echo value of percent i, and then I do done. You can see that I got to count the value of sequence one and five. But if I put this in a subshell, I'm actually calling the command sequence with those parameters. And so now I get five values. And so that's what's happening. Okay, so we have this now. And maybe what we can do is use a, instead of a for loop, use a while loop. And we can say while true, do these things, and then just keep doing it. And so that's doing that. Okay, maybe I don't want it to do it that fast. Um, Control Z, and then let's do kill minus nine three six five four zero, and so kill that. So I don't want it to be doing it that fast. Um, let's just see if it's still running, and it doesn't look like it's running. What I want to do is sleep between each time I post. I post a value, and then I want to sleep. Let's say sleep, sleep. Let's say five seconds or something like this, right? Um, so for now, that's what's happening. All right, so I'm posting values to our server, sleep five seconds, post another value. So that's good. Um, we can sort of do the same thing with, um, you know, our get. We can say, why don't we just get a value instead of posting it? And so to get a value, I just have to take out this part of it. And that's it. That's our get and sleep five seconds. And there you go. And so right now we're doing a get and we don't get anything back.